it being 201, let's go ahead and call the meeting order of the City of Florence Design Review Board. The minutes were sent out by email and the packets were mailed out to y'all. Did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? If so, I need a motion to accept, approve, or see if there's anything that needs to be changed. So, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Our first case today is case DRB 2023-10. It's a request for a certificate of appropriateness for demolition of six buildings on lots located at 121 and 122 East Cedar Street, specifically identified on the Florence County tax map number 90088-04-008 and 90088-09007 in the D3 Arts and Cultural Overlay District and D1 Redevelopment Overlay D District. Staff? Good afternoon. The applicants are asking for a certificate of appropriateness to demolish six commercial buildings. These are located on the north and south sides of the 100 block of East Cedar Street. Um, here's a close-up of them and the zoning map, they're in the central business district. And they also, as you can see on here, the uh, north side is in the arts and cultural overlay district and the south side is in the redevelopment overlay district. So we cover two different overlay districts. These, all these buildings were built in the 70s, 1970s and 1980s. They're part of the Cedar Towers owned by MUSC. And um, their request is to just demolish all of them, and I believe they're going to have a new project going on. Uh, these are the six buildings. The first one is a 347,000 square foot, five-story brick building. Um, the second one is a 13,000 square foot, one-story brick building. Three is about 11,000 square foot, two-story. Four is about an 8,000, two-story. Five is just a small little 1,600 uh, square foot, one-story building. And then six, uh, and those two are on the south side is a 27,000 square foot, one story um, building. None of them has any historic significance. They've been sent to the historical commission. Um, they were looking at them on Monday night. I haven't gotten an official response from them, but I did speak with a member of the board and he said they did not find any um, significance to any of these. So here are some site photos. Uh, they've been, uh, out of use for quite a while now, so they just want to take them down to clear the lot to do a new project. And we do have um, representatives here if you have questions for them. But that concludes staff's report. Okay, anyone have any questions of staff? Two questions. Um, one, does this take, is this all the buildings? Are there any buildings left? I don't think there are any. I mean, I just want to make just curious if there's any buildings that were not being demolished on the property. It didn't look like it. May I? Yeah, approach the stand and state your name, please, sir. Sorry. From my experience today, I experienced one of your local barbecue restaurants today in Delaware, Brazil. It was very good. We'd well, be um, disappointed with you if you did that, that one. Okay. Covered my white shirt. My name is Patrick Welsh. I'm the project manager for Stantec. Stantec is the project manager for MUSC on the project. I wasn't clear on the photograph that went up before the picture of the buildings, whether it accounted for all the buildings or not. So if you wouldn't mind, we can have that slide back up. Which one? The one that showed the aerial plan with the numbers. On the far, uh, let's call that plan north, south, east, and west. On the far west side, south of Cedar Street, there's a white roof building that's there. Is it numbered? Is that 122, that little building uh, see. next to the railroad tracks? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That building is potentially slated. Five, six, and seven are demo alternate plans for this project, and they are potentially slated depending on where we come in budget-wise on this. I feel very confident that they will likely go, but I don't see the other one labeled, so there should be a seven, and seven should be on the building with the white okay. roof. Only the six were on the application, but that's not a problem. I think that there's been some discussions going on back and forth that hasn't been quite worked out yet, but just to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Are those buildings of equal era and equal insignificance? Um, lesser. Okay. Yeah. 
I guess my question would be, could we possibly amend the motion to include all the buildings on the site as opposed to just those six? Absolutely. Any other questions? I had another one, but I've already forgotten it, so that's part of the That's probably the barbecue story. <laughs> well, have a beer if you need. Okay, thank you. Anyone else want to speak in the matter? Any other questions? We'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Open it up for discussion or a motion. I believe we approved with the, um, once we get the blessing of the historical, did the historical, did they approve it or we don't know if they approved it? I haven't gotten an official approval from it, it's unofficial. Okay. Pending the official approval? Okay. And with the modification for building seven? Yes. I'll second. All in favor? Uh, uh, motion carries. The street will look different. <laughs> yeah. Our second and last case today is case DRB 2023-12. It's a request for a certificate of appropriateness for the removal of two trees from the parcel located at 720 South Port Street, specifically identified as Florence County tax map number 9089-01 dash zero one zero in the D1 redevelopment overlay district. Staff? All right. This is the um, location of the Boy Scouts and I think the Red Cross has an office there. There's a dentist office there now. It's on at the corner of Dijon Street and South Coit Street. Here's a close-up of it and the uh, request involves a pair of trees that are in the middle of the back parking lot. And we've since received two letters of support, one from Dr. Webb Jones. Um, he is also, his parcel um, is in there and he is requesting, he recommends approval of the petition to remove the two trees without, without mitigation. Um, and then from Gary Finkley, who also owns property nearby, he recommends the same, to remove the trees without mitigation and they've worked together to remove trees, to protect parking assets in the past. Um, here's an over aerial view of the two trees requesting removal are there in the middle, and then um, all those letters refer to just um, vantage points of photos that I've taken. So here's the two trees um, involved, the ones with the arrows. Those are the ones they want to remove, and they're in the middle of the parking lot, and you can see the size of them. They're not particularly, I mean they're mature but they're not very large, but they are already starting to um, damage the driveway um, or the parking lot, which is only five years old, and so that's the reason for them wanting to have them removed. They have um, trees around the perimeter of the parking lot, as you see in these photos, and they also in recent years have planted um, in the large photo in this picture, you can't see them very well, but they've planted four um, tree, canopy trees in that green space and so they because they've planted all of those and they do have adequate trees around the parking lot they're requesting that they be allowed to remove these trees without having to plant anymore and they do have an adequate number of trees around the lot um, if they were to come in with a new request so um, that concludes staff's report okay. anyone have any questions of staff Hearing none, anyone here to speak in the matter? Please approach the bench and state your name, please. Yes, sir. My name is Michael Hesbach, and uh, I serve as a volunteer property manager in support of Camp Coker Property, the entity that owns the building. Um, and so I want to call attention, you know, we paved that lot five years ago when I uh, had a different role in life. Um, and that the tree's doing a significant damage. Um, our intention after we cut those trees down is to cut up that portion of the parking lot and repave it, as well as the drives on the north and south side entrance. The south side we share, we allow uh, Dr. Jones and Dr. Lee's office to use that parking space so that all will get repaved. And then the north drive. Um, we've also talked with the city uh, in the past about closing off the Brogdon side of our parking lot. 
um, for a variety of reasons. We see about 20 cars a day cut through our parking lot to go to the Belmont. Um, and we've also recently declined a request from uh, a neighbor wanting to use our parking lot for the development of a flea market. Um, and so that uh, traffic that cuts through our parking lot, we may be shutting all that down um, to prevent uh, the additional cut throughs. Uh, and then we'll reduce the wear and tear on our parking lot by closing that. that um, and we talked with Miss Elaine in the past about you know um, what the impact would that be and just make sure it's on our side of the, of the line and we're going to do that but our primary request today so I just kind of split all that other stuff in there uh, is to cut down the trees without any um, mitigation thank you anyone have any questions of Mr. Hasbaugh thank you Mike we will then close the hearing and open it up for discussion or a motion motion to approve second all in favor Okay. Motion carries. Certificate to be issued. Thanks, sir. And that being the last case, anything else needs to be addressed today, guys? That was 12 minutes, Mr. Chairman. Nice job. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for July 12th, and stating that, we are adjourned. <laughs>